robots transform and roll out. Hey guys, hope everyone's having a great weekend. Taking a look at a couple more Jada diecast vehicles. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 132 scale Optimus Prime and tomorrow we're going to be looking at the 124 scale kit which is in the same scale as the Optimus Prime and Ecto-1 that are already looked at with light up front LED scanner. That's really cool. So the 124 scale Optimus is still available. The 124 scale kit is still available on Big Bad Toy Store. Ecto-1 is sold out. Uh, for now, and this guy is currently available on Big Bad Toy Store for, he's on sale. He's uh, under 10 bucks. So I was really impressed with the 124th scale Optimus Prime, and I really like the idea of having a die-cast truck Optimus Prime that is almost exactly the same size as the original 1984 Optimus Prime. So a quick look at the box before we open it up. Once again, they're recreating the name name plates from the original G1 boxes. You get the Optimus Prime artwork from 1984. And they're telling you that you can see the robot on his chassis. I just love that the original box art is on the sides here on one side. And you get a peek at the robot that's underneath him, just like the bigger one, only this one isn't colored like it was on the bigger one. And I'll have the bigger one alongside this one in a bit to compare the two. They are resealable boxes, but this one is a little tricky to open up. You've got this paper that's catching in here, so this side isn't wanting to open up without tearing. A lot of vintage toy collectors know all about that type of box damage. And then over on this side, uh, my plastic tore a little bit pulling this out, so um, that's just me pulling on it, trying to open it up. Um, so it, it is nice that it's a resealable box, but if you're very, very picky about that type of thing, you're probably going to want some tools in order to keep that box as pristine as possible. And I really like the, the gridding, the G1 background that's on the bottom here, as well as on the back. Just makes it feel more G1. And he's got, uh, screws holding him in. So we're going to have to first uh, cut the tape here and then unscrew him from the base that holds him securely in his packaging. And this time it's just one screw since he's a little guy. And as with most of these die cast vehicles, this shouldn't be too hard to do. It's not like actually taking apart a fully manufactured toy. It's just meant to hold it in place until you can get it out of the package. So here is the 132 scale Optimus Prime. And he is die cast, but he is, I mean, he's smaller than the 124 scale. So obviously he's gonna be lighter, but he is extremely light. I'm just feeling around here for what is die cast. This whole part, the part you would expect to be die cast, feels like it's die cast. Nice cold metal. Uh, but I'm actually, I'm really surprised at how light this thing is. He's, he's extremely light. I wonder if I can balance him on my pinky with how light he is. Almost. This is how adults play with their toys. I might have to cheat a little bit here, but yeah, he's, he's extremely light. So I wasn't expecting, I was expecting him to be about the same weight as a G1 Optimus Prime, and he is... He's very, very light. And here he is out of the package. He's just basically a smaller version of the 124th scale. So if you've got the 124th scale and you're thinking about getting this one, he's going to be exactly what you expect. He's, he's the bigger one, just kind of scaled down a little bit. If you don't have the bigger one, maybe if you can't afford it, and you're thinking, wow, this guy is really uh, affordable right now, and I wouldn't mind <clears throat> having a little die cast prime in truck mode next to my robot G1 Optimus Prime, then uh, he might actually be right up your alley. I'm going to uh, bring in the trailer here. And uh, I did this a lot with the 124th scale version to see how that one looked with all of the different trailers. 
Uh, this isn't going to connect. It's a different type of connector again. But uh, I'm just wondering if we sit it on top, how it's going to look. And it is pretty much like the 124 scale. Uh, actually not as good. There is quite an angle, quite a bit of an angle going up. And this back wheel here looks like it's maybe not even touching the ground. Yeah, when you roll it forward and backward, the, those wheels aren't even moving. So, unfortunately, uh, that's not really going to work as well as some of the trailer attachments with the 124th scale. Now, you could put something in the trailer hitch. It wouldn't be too hard to put some sort of a, just a peg or something in here to stick out and then go into this hole right here and catch it to secure it. Um, and I guess that would be fine, but if if you're a, an adult collector and you're all about the attention to detail, and this does have quite a bit of detail in it, um, that's a huge detail that is just not going to work for you. So I'm going to bring in the rest of this Optimus Prime set. Uh, this is a G1 Optimus Prime reissue called New Year Convoy, which I reviewed in depth. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, part of the Patreon tribe, you can check that out. It's Patreon exclusive number 14, one of the earlier ones I did. But uh, let's move the trailer out of here and just do a little quick comparison of what this Jada 132 scale-ish truck looks like alongside the original Optimus Prime. So before I picked up this one, what I was most interested in is just uh, dimensions, height, seeing exactly how they measure up. And they're pretty close. The bumper on this one is a little bit lower. This one is just a tiny bit taller. And let's take a look and see how the cabs are. I think actually what I need to do here is kind of stack them one on top of the other to see for sure how the tops measure up. And they are almost exactly the same. It's very close. And if we put them side by side like this, you can see that the Jada one is just, well, they're about the same, about the same width. Uh, one noticeable difference is the color. The Jada one is a really nice bright cherry red and the original Optimus Prime as well as a lot of the reissues like this one weren't quite as bright a red. They were uh, just a just a tad darker red. The bright red was reserved for those uh, those quick sports cars and then the the back part um, this has always been more of like a purpley blue on G1 Optimus Prime, except for the G2 reissue, maybe some uh, cartoon accurate reissues. And this is a bright blue, and it's painted too. It's, uh, it's really nice. So these two are, they're very similar. The, the tires look about the same size. I think they go really well together. And just to show you what the truck will look like alongside a G1 Optimus Prime. Let's transform Optimus here. And this is one transformer that I never get tired of transforming. And we'll pop the fists in. So I said it in the review for the 124th scale version of this Jada Optimus. And I think it'll apply to this one as well. Um, on its own, it's okay. You can have it sitting on your office desk or on a shelf somewhere. It's, it's okay, but I think where it really shines is as an accessory piece. So this, this is awesome. If you have a G1 Optimus Prime, um, if you have a smaller collection and you can't afford to have two of these guys, one in robot, one in truck mode, you only have one, you could pick this guy up for just a few bucks and he looks fantastic. He's die cast. And there he is, just 
parked right behind your G1 Optimus Prime. And it looks similar enough that it goes perfectly with it. It looks like this guy would transform into that. Uh, the chrome goes nicely together. There's a lot of really nice unity and the colors aren't so different that they don't, they don't match up. Um, the reds are close enough that I think they look nice together. And then, um, I don't know, you could, I guess, take the trailer, pop it in behind here, and maybe if you pose it like that, it kind of, kind of hides the fact that the trailer isn't really matching up quite right. Um, I don't think anyone's going to want to rip this off. Maybe if you find a junker trailer and just grind or sand that down, that would probably work perfectly. It's actually a that's a perfect solution. Just grinding that down if you had a like a junker trailer that you didn't care about. Because I think that that would solve the problem. Drop it just enough, the amount that it needed to be dropped. Um, I, I won't be doing that to any of my trailers though. So yeah, that looks really nice as an extra little piece to display alongside existing transformers that you have. And the other comparison I need to do is comparing him with his big brother, the 124th scale Optimus Prime. And that, to me, seems like a huge, huge difference. That's, I didn't realize how, how big the size difference was until I literally just put this guy down right now beside this. That is, that is a huge difference. Yeah, this guy is very, very impressive. Um, especially for the price, my goodness, it is incredible the bang that I feel I get for my buck uh, with this one. So let's take a look at a couple of the differences. Some of the details had to be lost uh, in the downscaling. Uh, the, the big one is the doors no longer open. Um, these, are, these are shut permanently. Uh, no side mirrors on the little guy. He still does retain these handles. The uh, hubcaps are similar, similar gas tanks. Um, this thing is more secure. It's not a separate piece glued on. This guy right here on the big Optimus, this feels like a really fragile, check out how that's, that's moving there, this little trailer part. So that's one improvement, I guess, on the, on the little guy. Uh, we take a look at the back and very similar on the back. Just little paint dots representing the lights. There is actually a, a different design in this back trailer part too. Just looks a little bit different back here. And roughly the same design with the tanks on the back here. The smokestacks are definitely shorter on the little guy. So nice long smokestacks. And on the little guy, they're shortened, probably for the same reason they shortened Prime stacks on his reissue years ago. Just a safety hazard um, in case a, a kid gets their hands on it. And uh, you get the Autobot symbol, symbols on the sides, each side. Now inside, there is a steering wheel and it's chromed, just like on the big one. And it looks like there is room for drivers inside. So you know what that means. We're gonna have to pop this guy open. I'm gonna have to take some screws out and see if I can fit a driver in here. Um, the, the lights on the front are just like the original Prime. They're chromed over. The big one has, it looks like little clear plastic parts to represent the lights. But on the smaller guy, it's just, um, it's just colored in, which looks and feels more like the original G1 Optimus Prime. And then when you turn them up, you get Optimus Prime underneath, and on the big one, it's the same deal, only there's a little more color underneath there, you get red and blue, <laughs> it's tricky to move this guy around because I haven't put the screws back in to him, and, uh, and he's got drivers inside, so I'm trying not to knock them over too, because if you knock them over, um, it's pretty hard to get back in there. Okay, let's take this guy apart. It looks like there are only 
one, two, three, four screws. So this should be quick. And I'll start with the front just in case that's all we need to do. And these are quite a bit tighter than the one that was holding him on the packaging thing. And anytime you do this, you're taking a chance. So disclaimer, um, these aren't really intended to be taken apart like this. And you never know if a screw will go out nicely and easily and if it'll go back in nicely and easily. So anytime I'm doing this, um, I'm risking not being able to put it back together properly. And these don't seem to be, these screws don't seem to be cooperating all that well. So um, this one's not budging at all. I'm gonna have to go get one of those little rubber grip things and try to find another screwdriver. Okay, I got one of these oven grip things and a new screwdriver. So we'll see if that works a bit better. That one just doesn't want to... Looks like it's moving. Okay, that feels like it's loosened up now. Alright, that one's coming out. And that one too. And I don't know if that's it. It feels like it, it's wanting to separate there, but it's still held together by something else. There we go. All right. So that's how that comes apart. I think that's different than the other one. I think the screws are still in there. They didn't they didn't fall out. So there's the cab removed and can we pull this part out? Seems to be some resistance in there. It's not uh, it's not sliding out as uh, as smoothly as the big one did. So I've been trying for a few minutes here to pull this out, and it's just not going to come out. The problem is these handles are are melted in. Um, I think what they did was they they pushed the seat in, and then they melted the ends of these handles, this front chrome part, it's melted so that it won't come out. And because they did that, I think that's the part that's catching everywhere. So no matter, no matter how much I'm pulling on it, it's not opening up. And that's too bad because I was hoping to fit these little guys in. These little uh, spike and spark plug drivers that I got. They do fit. Uh, they're Microman sized, so they fit in uh, G1 Transformers and they'll sit in G1 Optimus Prime. I thought it would be kind of cool to stick them in here, uh, but uh, this is going to require more effort, customization, cutting uh, than I'm willing to put into it. So um, this guy is just going to remain a little uh, non transformable Optimus Prime truck that uh, can't fit any drivers, unfortunately. I got all the screws popped back in. Luckily, they're tightening all the way. It doesn't feel like they they got stripped. Uh, so that's back in there nice and secure and tight. Back to how he originally was. And uh, I guess knowing is half the battle. Uh, he is not as easy to take apart as the big guy who looks fantastic with drivers sitting in there, whether they're the, the uh, third-party partners. Um or the official Masterpiece little spike that comes with the Masterpiece Optimus Prime. But this guy doesn't look like you can take drivers. That's a shame. It would have been really nice if, like a big selling point. Um, that's always a big selling point for me for die-cast vehicles, being able to put a driver in. So not having like a, even a flap that'll open on the top. I know that's extra engineering, extra parts, but uh, yeah, you can't take drivers. I guess the best you can do is just pose a couple of guys beside them or in front of them. And uh, they still look pretty good. They can't hold their um, their wrenches very well, but it still looks pretty cool. And the last size comparison is with the G1 roller that came with G1 Optimus Prime. 
And just like with G1 Optimus Prime, this is pretty big. This roller is pretty big compared to Optimus himself. Uh, and the cartoon roller was quite a bit smaller. But that is the Jada 132 scale, 132-ish scale. Optimus Prime. And just like the big one, it's, uh, it's pretty nice if you have him. Um, I think the best way is just like this, kind of behind him as a little accessory piece. He's super shiny. His chrome is perfect, flawless. He's nice and clean, minty fresh. So if you've got a really nice, maybe a reissue Optimus Prime, uh, I think those two look really nice together. Welcome to all the new members of the Patreon tribe this week. Thank you so much for joining and supporting and contributing to the channel. Really looking forward to interacting with all of you over on patreon.com slash michaelmercy. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this review. Feel free to comment either here or Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Roll out! Ah.